Roger Williams is a 33-year-old pianist who over the past seven years has become an international recording star. Roger Williams grew up in Des Moines, Iowa, where his father is a Lutheran minister. When Roger was eight, he not only played the piano, but 12 other instruments. Later, he found time during summer vacations to work as a lumberjack in Minnesota. During the war, Roger joined the Navy and was sent to Idaho State College to study engineering. After the war, he returned to Idaho State to play a piano concert and met the girl who was to become his wife. She was the current football beauty queen. They were married in 1948. In 1952, Roger Williams came to New York and now, according to trade paper statistics, is the largest selling pianist in the history of the recording industry. Roger Williams, his wife Joy, and their two small daughters now live in this house in Bayside, Long Island, about 40 minutes away from the recording studios in Manhattan. Evening, Roger. Oh, hi, Ed. How are you? All right. Are you working or relaxing? <laughs> well, the last three weeks have been pretty uh, hectic, Ed. Actually, right now, I'm working on my arranging. Is there some urgency in your work, or is this your normal practice? Well, uh, it's my normal practice, but actually, there's quite a bit of urgency, and as much as uh, we're going on tour tomorrow, Ed, in fact, I'll be gone until Christmas. I think that uh, the last week has been about one of the toughest ones I've ever had in my life. In fact, last uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we recorded. Then Sunday, uh, Wagner College, out on Staten Island yes. here, was kind enough to give me an honorary doctor's degree. And you know, I got on that ferry coming home, and I didn't think I'd make it in time for the Ed Sullivan show Sunday <laughs> night. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I've been practicing pretty hard, and well, I've been working till three and four every morning. Roger, are you saying that it's all perspiration and little inspiration? Oh, I sure am, Ed. Uh, actually, I think that there is always a little inspiration that comes into play, but I think that the big talent I have is work. I've worked well ever since I can remember on music. And I find that if I work hard enough, why the inspiration comes. Uh, what kind of material have you been perspiring over recently, jazz or classical music? Well, we play all types on our uh, programs, Ed. Right now, in fact, tonight I've been working on an arrangement of the Warsaw Concerto. Would you like to hear it? I would indeed, thank you. Good enough. Beautiful, Roger. Thank, Thank you. you. But tell me, if you play like that late at night, aren't you afraid of waking the children? <laughs> well, I was, Ed, for a while, but uh, just lately we've had this soundproof studio built. In fact, the only thing that touches is the floor. The whole other, the walls and the ceiling are just a shell. By the way, that are they... way uh, I don't wake the kids and the kids don't bother me either. Are they sleeping now? No, uh, the kids are upstairs, Ed. In fact, I don't think you've met my wife and children yet, so why don't you go up and uh, see them in the living room, and I'll be with you in just a minute. Right, thank you. Good evening, Joy. Good evening, Mr. Merle. This is Alice Ann, and Hello. this is Laura Lou. Hello, Alice Ann. Hello. How are you, Laura Lou? Fine. Laura Lou, tell me, are you going to play piano like your father? Um, yes, I started last year when I was six. You enjoy it? Yes, I did very much. How about you, Alice Ann? You want to play the piano? Yes. Someone told me you wanted to be a singer, is that right? Yes. <laughs> then the whole Williams family is musical, right? 
Well, that's right, Ed. As a matter of fact, I was studying music when I met Roger. And I decided to give up music as a profession because I kind of like being a wife and mother. That's a very unusual looking coffee table, Joy. Well, thank you, Ed. Uh, you know, we don't have room enough for a piano-shaped swimming pool, so Roger decided that maybe we could have a piano-shaped coffee table. It's very nice. Uh, Roger? Yeah? I, I was just about to try to arrange a Williams family concert. Do you think that could be done? Well, I think we could arrange that, Ed. I tell you, uh, every night, at least the nights I'm home, we all go down in our playroom, and sometimes Laura Lou plays, sometimes Alice Ann sings, and sometimes we all play and sing. We have a good time. Well, the children had a special nap today, Ed. But if they'd like to put their dollies away, I think they could join their father for a little get-together in the uh, playroom. Oh, five. five. Ed, why don't you come with me uh, a little later, huh? All we'll right. We'll go down five. there. Good. Uh, Joy. Yes, Ed. Uh, since you were a campus beauty queen and Roger was playing a concert when you met, how did it happen? At a football game or a concert? <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, it happened right after one of his concerts. Uh, one of the professors at the school we were attending introduced us, and believe it or not, Ed, he, pr he proposed to me the first date. The first date? Yes. Uh, weren't you a little bit surprised? Oh, very much so. In fact, I uh, thought he was one of these best musicians. <laughs> but I found out how wonderful he was, and I married him. Were you married at school? No, we uh, were married in his hometown in Des Moines, Iowa. Say, Ed, that was quite a marriage, too, you know. It, uh, I think I'm probably the only bridegroom in history that ever played for his own wedding. How was that? Well, you know, Dad's a minister. Yes. He had a very large church in Des Moines. And, uh, mm -hmm. of course, I being the organist, why, well, I had to play at hundreds of weddings. And, well, I just got a little tired of all that old music that they play. It's beautiful, but, you know, when you play it about a thousand times, you get a little sick of it. Yeah. So I figured, well, by golly, when I get married, I'm going to compose all my own wedding music. And I did it. And, Ed, you know, that was about the cheapest wedding you've ever heard of in your life. Uh, my father and my uncle married us. They didn't charge anything. Yeah. And, of course, the church was free. And, of course, we didn't pay anything for the music either. <laughs> now, now, Roger, what do you and Laura Lou charge for your performances? You know, the one downstairs we're about to have? <laughs> Well, they're really pretty expensive, Ed, but just for you, we'll give a free one tonight. Good. <laughs> I'll see if the girls are ready. Thank you. Okay, and now you come with me, and we'll go downstairs in the playroom, and uh, Laura Lou will join us, okay? Uh, Roger, with this rigorous schedule of yours, um, how do you ever find time to relax? Well, it isn't too easy, Ed, but when I do relax, it's right down here. Uh, by the way, this are, these are a few of our gold records here. Here's the old piano that we all sort of beat on. And uh, here's our organ, which we like very much. Wait a minute. What's this I see in the foreground? Did you say this was a playroom or a gymnasium? <laughs> oh, you mean the old punching bag, huh? Yeah. Well, you see, Ed, before my dad uh, went into the ministry, why, he used to be a boxer. And he was always afraid that I was going to turn out to be a sissified preacher's son. <laughs> so ever since I can remember, he's had a pair of gloves on me. In fact, uh, I did quite a bit of boxing in high school and also in the Navy. And every day I come down here and punch the bag a little bit. You know, it keeps me in shape for all the concerts. I, I was under the impression that all pianists had to guard their hands very carefully. Well, I've been real lucky, Ed. Uh, ever since I can remember, Dad helped me to tape my hands very carefully. And uh, actually, I've never broken any bones. I got a couple of them in my nose uh, broken, but the hands have been pretty good so far. Now, Roger, when you're throwing punches at the heavy bag, uh, you don't have rock and rollers in mind by any chance, do you? <laughs> no, I don't, Ed. In fact, I think a lot of the teenagers uh, maybe get a little steam off of their minds the same way I do by punching the bag. You know, Ed, I like all types of music. I like classical and, well, I like jazz and I like pop music too. And I think that, well, everyone should be tolerant of all types of music. Just as I think that everyone should be tolerant of all types of people, no matter what their race or religion. You know, Ed, intolerance to me is like 
Well, just playing on the white keys, because uh, to play the music that I believe in and love, I've got to play on all the keys. Oh, well, now, uh... Hey, Laura Lou. <laughs> what are you going to play for us now? Yeah, well, Laura Lou uh, has been working on a new tune here. You know, it's almost Halloween. And she got a new thing in her book here called Spooky. Spooky. Actually, it's an old uh, German nursery rhyme. Laura Lou, do you think we can play a chorus for Mr. Merle? You start, huh? Let's play two. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura Lou. You're welcome. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Ed. We Good night, Roger. Thank, Good thank night. you very much for letting us come. Thank Good night, you. Joy. Good night, Ed. <laughs> Good night. It's been very pleasant indeed. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>